Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and today in this video, let's unbox and take a look at what Asus have done with their brand new compact flagship phone, the Zenfone 10. So the box has a nice new logo, one that we'll be seeing on the phone as well as the case. Opening it up, we're greeted by this grey insert. This one houses the SIM ejector tool, a user guide and the hat shell case. Now just out of curiosity, I popped my Zenfone 9 into it and it fits just fine. Anyways, let's move on to the Zenfone 10, that's why we're here. Peeling off that plastic, the green back, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Asus also offers the Zenfone 10 in four other colors. Well, the rest are fine. I like this, the Aurora Green, the best. So unlike last year, I'm actually happy with the colorway that they sent me. Now, talking about last year, here's the Zenfone 10 side by side with my black Zenfone 9. The back panel still remains plastic, though this time around, Asus have gone for a more eco-friendly recycled material. The finish feels a little rougher, which should be better for the grip. Now that said, this is no vegan leather, so I would still kind of advise against using this phone naked. Because at the end of the day, plastic is plastic and plastic does tend to pick up scratches easily. So using the included case might be a sensible option. Now of course, out of curiosity, I did try the reverse, the Zenfone 10 with the Zenfone 9's case, just to see if you can reuse old accessories and it fit, kinda, as in it fit, but it wasn't perfect. Now that's cause the thickness, it's gone up this year. The Zenfone 9 and the 10, they look identical from the front cause the width and the height are unchanged. But the thickness, it's changed by 0.3 millimeters and there is a reason for this. Now with the Zenfone 10, ASUS have added 15 watt wireless charging support. This is also the same reason why the phone's 3 grams heavier though. That's just a technical difference since I wasn't even able to feel it when I was holding both phones in hand at the same time. Now other similarities include the Zenfone 10 retaining the same IP68 rating as its predecessor and also the placements. Well, let me actually walk you through it. As evident by the antenna bands to the side, the frame is still metal. Now the volume keys and the power button, they reside to the right. The fingerprint scanner still remains built into the power key. It's fast and all but I'd rather Asus have gone with an in-display scanner. Now the other biometric option is via the selfie camera and this hole punch up top. Now this selfie camera, it's been upgraded. This is a 32 megapixel RGBW sensor. Asus say it should make for better selfies under low light. Do know that by default, these pictures you're seeing, they've been down to eight megapixels. With video, unlike a lot of phones these days, you are allowed to shoot 4K 30. How do you think this turned out? Leave a comment. Now coming back to the build, we have the primary microphone, speaker, USB type C port, and a SIM tray to the bottom. While there is support for dual physical SIMs, there is no support for microSD. That said, Asus continues to retain a headphone jack despite this small a form factor. There is also support for Dirac Virtua to give you spatial audio via both wired and wireless earphones. Now the earpiece up top, it pulls double duty, it functions as a secondary speaker. So we do get stereo output here and the sounds loud and rich. Yeah, have a listen. Now before we take a look at the display and the specs, let's wrap up the unboxing part of this video. So digging further in, we have a USB Type-C to Type-C cable, which is followed by a 30 watt fast charger. So basically the big change with the unboxing experience is this case, how the camera cutout looks. The jokes apart, that is the reason why everything feels so familiar. And that is because the Zenfone 10 uses almost the same panel as its predecessor. Once again, we get a 5.9 inch Super AMOLED panel with a 20 by nine aspect ratio, which still happens to be protected by Corning's Gorilla Glass Victus. The resolution remains unchanged, Full HD+, peak brightness, still the same, a very respectable 1100 nits. Now, despite all those similarities, there is one change, that being refresh rate. It's now 144 hertz. Notice how I have an asterisk next to that 144 hertz. That's because you can't use 144 hertz in all situations. Now go into settings, display and refresh, you'd see four options. You can set it to either auto, which varies between six or seven different refreshes, which does not include 144 Hz, or you can choose between 60, 90, and 120. So how do we even use 144 Hz? If that's your question, good one. You could use it while you're gaming. So when you're in a game that supports 144 Hz, slide in from the corner to bring up Game Genie. Here you can switch it to whatever refresh rate you want, including 144 Hz. 
It seems like Asus have done this to conserve battery life. Given the smaller form factor, well, I'm not a huge fan. I do understand why they did it. Now guys, that, this form factor, this display, this is gonna be everybody's biggest deciding factor. This is gonna be why you buy this phone or why you don't buy this phone. To me personally, I find 5.9 inches a tad too small to comfortably use Android. But then again, that's just initial impressions from someone who's been using much larger screens for a long, long time. So if you are a fan of small form factor phones, you want something powerful, then you should be right at home with the Zenfone 10. Now moving on, the battery capacity also remains unchanged at 4300 mAh, though Asus claims thanks to their optimizations on the chip on the inside, the actual battery life has been improved by about 13%. Now talking about the chip on the inside, of course, we've got the flagship Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 here, running the show coupled with eight or 16 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM and 128, 256 or 512 gigs of UFS 4.0 storage. If you notice the 6128 base has been removed and instead it's been replaced by a 16512 new top spec. On the software side of things, we have Android 13 with Asus's custom skin on top. Now there are some things I really like. For example, right at first boot, Asus asks you if you wanna choose to go with their tweaks or leave things stock. And they even give you an option to mix and match what you want left stock and what you don't. Once you've set your phone up, the first thing you notice is there's absolutely no bloat whatsoever. No glance lock screen, nothing, no pre-installed apps. One more reason why Asus desperately needs to bring back the Zenfone Max M, M series line. It would be amazing in the budget segment. What do you think? Don't you think they should bring it back? Leave a comment down below. Now there are a few things Asus have added, but they are mostly things that just enhance the user experience and don't really weigh the interface down. For example, you have twin apps that lets you natively clone something like Facebook or WhatsApp. You have the edge bar that gives you access to some quick toggles and some apps to launch in floating windows. You then have Game Genie that we already saw when switching refresh rates. There's the reachability style one hand mode. Now barring these few little touches here and there, the interface has largely been left stock. No surprises, it feels fast and responsive. Apps as expected launched instantly. Now on the flip side, just like with the ROG Phone 7 series and the Zenfone 9 before this, Asus offers only two years of Android version upgrades and three years of security patches for the Zenfone 10, which is below the industry standard of three years of Android version updates and four years of patches. Anyways, let's now move on, take a look at the cameras here. The actual specs, they mostly remain unchanged from the Zenfone 9. The primary is the 50 megapixel Sony IMX766 that's paired with an f1.9 lens. What is new here is it's using Asus's second generation gimbal stabilization tech. Now the images, they seem fine, but I think the fact that this is an aging sensor, it would come into play when we have more challenging conditions. Now I'll have more to say if I do end up doing a full review, but for now, it does seem to be able to take very good images, though I found the shutter speed to not be too quick. I did end up with some blurry shots when I was shooting moving subjects. Now with video, you see this point here, See how wide that circle is? As long as this point is kept inside the circle, the footage should be stable. This is what Asus's second generation six axis gimbal stabilization does. And what you're seeing now are the results. This is what we shot. The extreme stability that you're seeing here, it seems to be a combination of that hardware based gimbal OIS and Asus's gyro assisted EIS. Now the secondary camera, it's the same 13 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide that we saw last time around. That's not much changed here. Now there is one more thing that Asus has not changed and that would be the price. Just like with the Zenfone 9, this one's launched for the same asking price of 800 euros. Uh, so while the Zenfone 10 might not be a drastic departure from the Zenfone 9, it feels like a nice little upgrade for people wanting a whole lot of power in such a small tiny form factor. As of now, Asus says they have no plans of launching this in India, so would you still wanna see a full review? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, I guess we are at the end of this video. Thumbs up, thumbs down, based on how you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks for your time, thanks for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash, you've been watching C4E Tech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day, bye-bye.